Hello, great to see you all. I'm very happy to be here on stage with Vinit, who's uh, one of the bigger ecosystem builders I know. He was at the first Catapult five years ago, but uh, Vinit, can you tell a bit about your story and what you built and then what you think is... Yeah, nice. thanks, Terrell, and uh, lovely to be back here at Catapult. I, I'm a forester by training, uh, not necessarily a finance guy. Uh, but uh, at a very young age, I was curious, uh, why do, how do you make poor people rich? So this is 1995, 96, 97, and uh, I realized if you have money and if you have a business idea, then you can become rich. Uh, I came from a middle class family. Nobody in my family had done business, so I thought, well, uh, if you can make poor people do business, you might make them rich. So that's how in 2001, with $100 of personal capital, I started. Of course, I struggled very badly. Uh, but the good part of being a forester is, since I did not know how much money people make who are in finance, I was always happy. Uh, long story short, in the last 20 years, we have gone from uh, the $100 that I started with to around $1.3 billion. Uh, we have 7,000 employees which work for Avishkar, and then we have created around 250,000 jobs and livelihoods. Uh, we invest in India, Indonesia, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, East Africa. Uh, as a group, we actually have uh, four entities, different entities, and uh, then we have eight different funds. Uh, and uh, we have invested in everything from financial services, fintech, edtech, uh, water, sanitation, agriculture, agritech. Uh, and uh, out of those 70 investments we have made, 39 we have exited. Uh, we try to actually still continue to focus on the term impact unicorn rather than the valuation unicorn. I, I don't know how many of you know, but India has gone from one unicorn in 2015 to 100 unicorns in 2022. So in seven years, we've become world's third largest producer of unicorn. I genuinely believe that uh, valuation is not what we seek. So we are trying to find our first impact unicorn. And uh, I must admit, we are far away from reaching anywhere. So that's my story. Cool. And thrilled. Uh, so uh, one of the reasons why we came together was uh, we were trying to find how people come from very different backgrounds to uh, form their own stories. So I came from the forest, and now I'm sitting here <laughs> in Norway. But then I met Thrall a long time back, and uh, uh, I was always curious what brought him uh, from Norway, where you don't see much poverty. Uh, you feel the need to make impact, but not necessarily in your surrounding. Uh, Thrall, what has been your journey and what brought you here? I, I have, um, well, a lot of different things, but <clears throat> I, I was a tech founder and entrepreneur, still, still am a kind of entrepreneur. But um, <clears throat> I was working with building cool tech things and then I saw that I can help people doing good with business and tech skills. So I started working with Ashoka, some social entrepreneurship, started investing them. <clears throat> and I thought, this is, this is what I want to do in my life. I want to make the world better much more fun, much more rewarding. And I think that you can also both do good investments and do good impact. So I joined um, Tom Nick and Nexus and met a lot of great people, including you and Jed Emerson and Charlie that influenced me to think, <clears throat> how can I do this better? How can I be part of building the ecosystem and also make investment vehicles <clears throat> to enable, <clears throat> enable people to actually invest in good solutions and to um, to, uh, to, to support the founders that solve problems. We have a very clear philosophy in Catapult VC, which is the for-profit fund arm, that we find founders that really want to solve a problem. They need to be a really good business and good at tech, and then they can build businesses that actually can uh, provide the outsized return from solving problems. But also, how do you work to make them embed that in the business model so there's direct causation from the, from the impact to the <coughs> business they make? And then we have the Catapult Foundation, which is all the non-profit work. The Catapult Future Fest like this is um, <clears throat> yeah, a non-profit initiative. We do things like ecosystem building and, and education to bring people on. And same as you have <coughs> with your setup, uh, Sankalp in India and Africa. You want to tell a little bit more about that uh, part? Yeah. So I think uh, one of the advantages of being a forester is you understand a term called ecosystem very early in your life. Uh, I always believe that. Uh, if you really need money to work, uh, there has to be an ecosystem that supports the change that you're trying to manifest. And so uh, in 2009, I started struggling to convince people from whom I was trying to raise money that there are enough smart people with great ideas to change the world. Uh, it was very difficult to fly from India to Europe and convince people that uh, Indians have ideas that can change India. 
quite dramatically, and that they should give me their capital for so that I can invest in them. Uh, and that's when I hit upon this idea of Sankalp, which I don't know, some of you might have visited, some of you might. Uh, where the idea was to sh pick up some 10, 15 gentlemen or women with great ideas. Uh, and I realized the articulation of the idea was a problem. The entrepreneurs speak a language that investors didn't understand. And investors spoke a language that entrepreneur didn't. So if you put them together in a room still, the investors will come out saying, hey, I didn't find an entrepreneur, and an entrepreneur couldn't find money. So we started coaching these very young people with uh, uh, very path-breaking ideas in communicating with investors, because I realized once you have money, you don't want to learn much. Uh, so the entrepreneurs were hungry, and they wanted to learn, so we were able to coach them. And soon we started going, so first our first conference, first Sankalp, 300 people turned up. Uh, and then it went up to 1,500 people in India from 40 to 60 countries. And then in 2013, I decided to switch continents and jumped into Africa. Uh, I distinctly remember first conversation in Africa was another conference, what are you guys going to do here, you brown guys coming to the black continent and being <laughs> useless guy fellows, et cetera. But uh, fact is, uh, in 2020, the uh, Sankal conference has 2,000 people, 70 countries. That will tell you, actually, uh, that we were doing something worthwhile that the <coughs> locals appreciated. And, uh, and I think uh, that ecosystem, the vibrancy of the ecosystem, uh, is very critical and important for you to actually bring about change. So, Yeah, I, I totally agree. I think it's interesting there are forestry related to the ecosystem because I've learned from my other people, but you need to bring people together, you need to learn, and you need to enable action. And uh, that's why we started Capital Future Fest, and that's what, you know, learning from, I think it was the year after I was in uh, Sankap in Mumbai, and uh, saw the great things happening, so. <clears throat> but, um, so looking forward, what, what's the big things for you in the future? So I think uh, sustainable development goals uh, were quite interesting for me. I, 2015, when the goals came up, I first wondered whether, uh, is it possible for the, min I mean, the prime ministers and the presidents of the world to have a very risky and quantified goal? I mean, to actually go up on a stage, sign a document that says that there will be no hunger, no poverty, no inequity within one and a half decades seemed like uh, uh, a brazen miscalculation uh, from the governments. Uh, that's how I saw it. Uh, but then the more I thought about it, the more I realized uh, it probably is the bravest announcement humanity has ever made. Uh, since the time Homo sapiens started walking straight, I don't think so we have seen a world without hunger, without poverty, without inequity. So to, f to achieve that in 15 years, and that 193 governments have signed it, must be something. Uh, it's probably one of the most bizarre declarations uh, that humanity has ever seen. But if achieved, we would have changed the world like never before. And since then, I have actually really been inspired to chase that goal. Uh, I was part of the business commission that wrote that paper talking about 2.5 trillion a year is the investment we need uh, to achieve a world that is without hunger, without poverty, without equity, without inequity. And uh, 2.5 trillion every year, so it's not 2.5 trillion overall, it's 2.5 trillion every year. Now in isolation, that number is very large, 2.5 trillion, but if you know that the global capital is pool is $400 trillion, we are asking for the world to sacrifice half a percent of earning every year to change the world forever. What big is that ask? Half a percent growth. Now, uh, I personally thought we should actually chase this, and so, we have taken a target to try to go from the current one and a half billion that we managed to around 12 billion. Uh, in the process, actually inspire and showcase more and more new talent uh, to actually build businesses, mentor new people, entrepreneurs, as well as fund managers. Uh, try to come up with different and new models. And I think uh, while I was doing all this in the last four or five years, COVID struck and the climate change uh, issues that came up, uh, it very clearly told me that you cannot actually try to change the life of people from a social impact perspective without trying to reduce the risks that the climate change actually brings. And so while I never focused on climate change, but in the last two years, we have been significantly working on every aspect of climate change, and we are going to be launching a fund called Carbon First Fund by the end of this year. Uh, it's going to be our largest fund, and what we are offering to investors is a carbon credit in exchange of the money that they will give. And I think, uh, uh, I personally think that uh, if we are able to convince 
significant number of investors to actually participate in the fund, uh, then you are making a significant impact. You are also also trying to address some of the issues of climate change and yet putting capital at work for the humanity. So, so these are some of the things that uh, uh, we are really working hard on. And hopefully, you will see some outcomes by the end of this year. Cool. I, I think we have uh, quite a few projects in Catapult. Catapult Foundation will be doing more on the kind of pushing the field forward around the impact system change investing and making, uh, making more people invest in systemic things. But uh, we also have startup in, in Africa now in <coughs> Rwanda and Mauritius, where we focus on food, ag, and climate early stage startups. And I think that's where hopefully we can find some way of collaborating where you have. Uh, Quite a lot of stuff happening. I, I, I'll actually take you back, Thrall, to our conversation in 2016 uh, when the idea of catapult was just emerging. And uh, I think there was, there was a gentleman called Kevin Jones, some of you would know him, started SOCAP, uh, we started Sankalp. And Thrall actually said, listen, you guys have got covered North America, you guys have covered Asia and some bit of Africa. How about bringing Nordics into play? And frankly, I had never actually thought it like that. Uh, and the more I have come to Catapult, the more I have realized that uh, different parts of the world bring different kinds of cultural inputs to the idea of impact. Uh, and I think, therefore, uh, the more you bring the world together, the chances of you actually creating something far more path-breaking uh, and far more impactful is possible. So I think. Uh, uh, if there are potential opportunities for us to collaborate beyond actually speaking at each other's forum, uh, it would actually make a huge difference. And I'll actually extend my invitation to all of you. I think Sankalp is taking place in 28th, 29th of September in India, uh, and most likely February next year in Africa. Those of you who have not heard about it, uh, uh, or would like, or will be curious to know, I'll be happy to talk about. I can also actually tell you all the secrets that I have learned from my journey from $100 to a few billion uh, of what investors think, what they ask, and what they do, uh, and how to convince them to give their money, even if you don't know how to return it. So. <laughs> cool. I think we're <coughs> a bit over time, but um, I think definitely North, South, Anglo, also Nordics and, and India, how can we bridge that? Because you need those to connect and, and learn from each other. So I think there's definitely things we need to follow up on here. I think thank you so much for being here and for all the work you've done. It's um, yeah, amazing. Thank you for having me, Terrell. <laughs>